So it seemed like, a, a, given the importance of the river to this community, that people spent a lot of time on the river right. and not necessarily in the plank house. Mm -hmm. What do we know about the canoes and life in the canoes? Well, we know from ethnohistoric accounts, ethnographic accounts, that canoes were really, really important. There were canoes. Lewis and Clark talks about uh, canoes, and there are photos, there are drawings of canoes and things like that, from a very, very small, you know, seven or eight feet long, to canoes that could carry six tons of material. Uh, there are accounts, uh, descriptions of people going past villages in which there are hundreds of canoes. A lot of them little, really small ones, and there are accounts from further north in terms of, you know, small children on rapid streams out there learning how to work them. So the canoes were a fundamental part of life. Uh, we really like to find one, but <laughs> we never have. Uh, so, and we can see, uh, we're actually trying to, f we're actually grappling with that. We're trying to figure out ways to, how do you get at the impact of a piece of material culture when you know it's there, but you don't actually have it? So how can you see, so we're, that's a real problem for us. I can't give you a good, quest, good answer in the sense that we know they're there, and then we can see in the presence of you know, fish that we know that were taken with line and the transportation of stuff that the sites are full of things that with pedestrian people you don't find. So for example, what they would do is for making stone tools, it's clear if they were stopping at a combo bar, bar or something, a river, river bar, they would stop and probably sit and throw a whole bunch of rocks into the bottom of the canoe and bring them back and then work through at their leisure. Oh, that's a good one, that's a bad one, that's not. You don't see that with pedestrian folks. And when they bring in stone to work, they know it's gonna be useful. Cats pull and mire, they're just bringing in rocks. Uh, um, you know, these antlers here, elk antlers, they're curating, they're bringing stuff back to the sites, which they're storing against things, bulky, awkward objects, which they're storing for anticipated need. And again, that's the kind of thing that with, with pedestrian folks you often don't see. The things that come in are processed. But a catapult of mire is coming in raw. It's coming in unprocessed. It's going into those cellars. Uh, and people, get, when they get around to it, they're, they're making use of it. But there's, so there's a lot of that kind of stuff. And you can see that thing about, okay, that's probably the canoes. You can bring in, you know, several hundred pounds of stone without, and it's just part of the, you know, just throw it in and then you think, oh, that's not going to work, and don't worry about it.